Good morning. Welcome to Music Sunday here at First Parish in Framingham. My name is Taryn Hummel. I am a member of the Bell Choir and a member of First Parish, and I use he, him pronouns. And I will be your worship associate this morning. First Parish in Framingham is a welcoming congregation. We celebrate and welcome people of all sexual orientations, races, ages, gender identities, abilities, or beliefs. We welcome you if you are joining us in the meeting house on Zoom, or if you are watching this service after the fact. Whoever you are, whoever you love, and wherever you are on your life's journey, you are welcome here. Unitarian Universalism is a liberal religion that honors wisdom from many sources. We keep our minds open to the religious questions people have struggled with in times of peace and place. I draw your attention to the announcements in our order of service. Immediately following our service, you are invited to join us for coffee hour in Scott Hall across the Greeley Courtyard. For the safety and comfort of all, please remember to keep your mask on at all times when you're inside First Parish's buildings, unless you're actively eating or drinking or speaking. Since 1701, people have gathered in the, as this community seeking peace and seeking meaning. Those people are like you. You belong here, maybe only for the next hour, but we hope for longer. You belong here and we are happy to have you with us. At this point, I invite you all to take a deep breath in and back out. Continue to breathe over the next few moments. Begin to let go of what you need to let go of to be more fully present to yourself, one another, and the sacred in this time and place. We look forward to exploring how we can uncover and share our unique gifts during the sacred hour together. Morning. My name is Dean Arvidsson, and I'm the music director here at First Parish. It's so nice to say that. Um, we'd like to dedicate this music, uh, music Sunday service to the memory of Faith Waters. She was a very active member of this congregation and its music for so many years. <clears throat> In the announcements, you'll see that this coming Saturday, March 25th, will be a fundraising concert held in Scott Hall. We're limited to 100 people. So early sign up is wonderful. It's definitely suggested. Um, and you can find that in the um, uh, Faithful Dispatch, a link to that, as well as on the website. If you're watching it online, we're limited to only 2,000. <laughs> so again, early sign up is really suggested. <laughs> All right, so register early and often. Uh, Stephen Beth Greeley will be moving soon to the DC area. Uh, so Steve and Tom's band have been kind enough to, to put together a, a parting gift of a, a nice fundraising concert. And I hope everyone can, uh, can enjoy that and partake in it. Uh, I'm really looking forward, it'll be a lot of fun. All proceeds will go to the church. There will be CDs available for sale also for purchase. <clears throat> a flame within a chalice is a primary symbol of the Unitarian Universalist faith tradition to symbolize the light of reason, the warmth of community, and the flame of hope. It is our tradition to begin our worship by kindling the flame. Today, I'd like to light the chalice with these words from Kabir. How blessed am I that amidst this great joy, I sing within my own vessel. It is the music of the meeting of soul with soul. It is the music of forgetting sorrows, it is music that transcends all coming and all going forth. With that, I'd like to invite the choir up to sing our opening anthem, Peace.
Oh, yep. Yeah. Please rise as you're <laughs> able and willing. Uh, I skipped ahead on the thing. For a song of affirmation and spoken affirmation. Thank you. <laughs> Love is the doctrine of this church. The quest of truth is its sacrament, and service is its prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge in freedom, to serve all life with compassion, to the end that all souls shall grow into harmony with the divine. This is our great covenant, one with another and with our God. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> Upstairs. Upstairs. Good morning. Is that working? Is it? No. Somebody needs to turn me on. <laughs> Not that way. You got it? How are we doing? Oh, that sounds better. Oh, is that better? All right then. Good morning. My name is Lauren Strauss. I am the Director of Religious Exploration here at First Parish. I use she, her pronouns. And today I have a story about music, but it's also a story about the interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part. It is called Because. The score is by Mo Willems and the performance is by Amber Wren. This is how it began. Because a man named Ludwig wrote beautiful music, a man named Franz was inspired to create his own. Okay. I'm gonna lose this thing here. It's gonna drive me crazy. Okay, because many years later, people wanted to hear Franz's beautiful music, they formed an orchestra. Because a man had practiced since he was a kid, he was asked to join. Because a woman studied night and day, she too was asked to play. Because many others loved and practiced their instruments, there were enough musicians. Because someone created a poster about Franz's music, tickets were sold. Because the train conductor stopped the train at the grand concert hall, the orchestra conductor arrived. You can see him there in the train, if you have really good eyesight. Because the orchestra librarian had copies of the score, the orchestra rehearsed.
Because workers checked the lights and the seats and swept the floors, the grand hall was ready. Because the time had come, the ushers opened the doors. Because someone's uncle caught a cold, someone's aunt had an extra ticket for someone special. Because the usher helped the aunt and her special guest, they found their seats. Because everyone was there to hear beautiful music, it was quiet. There's no words on this page. Or this page. Look at that. You can see their music. In row C, seat 14, sat the girl with the uncle's ticket. She heard the beautiful music written by the man named Franz, and it changed her. <laughs> the girl was changed. Here she is, she's flying on the music. From that moment on, the girl learned every she, everything she could about music because it fed her. Soon, she started to write music, too, because, like Franz, the young woman had something to share. Over time, the woman became very good because she worked very hard. One night, her music was discovered because she was also very lucky. Then she was invited to play her music at the Grand Concert Hall because so many people wanted to hear it. Her composition was dedicated to the uncle in row C, seat 14, because it was his ticket that brought her there. And that night, someone else was changed. That is how it happens. World premiere. It says, Symphony Number no. 1, The Cold. Thank you. And now we will sing our children and teachers to church school. In our community, there's great joy and there's also great sorrow. We set aside this time because we know that joy shared is joy expanded, and, so and sorrow shared can feel as though someone is lifting a burden. 
You can write down your joys each week in the Joys of Sorrows book, which is at the, uh, at the back of the sanctuary as you're entering, or you can submit those online and have them read aloud here. <clears throat> For this week, there are no sorrows. That's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> That's just great. Uh, so if we could have a, uh, a candle lit for, for any sorrows that anyone is feeling. And uh, let's sing the first verse of 1002 in your hymnal, Comfort Me. Comfort me. Comfort me. Comfort me, O oh my soul. Comfort me, comfort me, comfort me, O oh my soul. Now for joys, we had one posted from uh, Debbie and David Doucette. Uh, Deb has uh, successfully gone through her procedure and is uh, doing well, resting at home, surrounded by loving family. Uh, so that's wonderful news. <clears throat> and Rebecca Crawford enters, my heart, my heart bursts with pride for the youth group and their generosity of spirit in that Canvas challenge, in their Canvas challenge, and with gratitude to the Canvas committee who hosts this morning's coffee hour. We thank you so much. Uh, so if we could sing uh, the second verse, please. Sing with me, sing with me, sing with me, oh my soul. Sing with me, sing with me, sing with me, oh soul and we'll light one last candle today for those thought, joys and sorrows not spoken today and we'll sing along with the third verse which would be speak for me speak for me <clears throat> speak for me Speak for me, O oh my soul. Speak for me. Speak for me. Speak for me, O oh my soul. Thank you, Stephen. Let us now settle into some time for prayerful contemplation. Recently, we talked about how music can be a meditation. Try using many of the pieces today to feel that. Be aware of your breathing and just feel the music. <clears throat> I'm going to play one of my pieces, Metaklie. Uh, at the end of the piece, there'll be a little bit of quiet time. Whether you use this time for prayer, meditation, or just time to reflect, may you feel the love of this community from wherever you are.
is beautiful, Dean. Thank you. Oh, my heart. Good morning. My name is Jen Walton, and uh, my preferred pronouns are uh, she, her. I've been a member here at First Parish, uh, dating back to when Stephanie was here. For those of you who remember that, I would give you a date, but I don't remember it. So <laughs> I started coming with my family, my mom, Beth Walton, who is an usher today, and my daughter, Erin, who now lives in Florida. Erin was an infant, and uh, she's now a young adult. I can't even believe it, time flies. Coming here every Sunday really grounded us, uh, our family. It was dedicated time away from other distractions, a place to focus and find balance. We all found a community of diverse, thoughtful, passionate people that we connected with. It was everything that we had hoped for. And many, many of you we have been on this journey for years with, and some of you we will continue that journey with that we haven't quite met yet. For me, the surprise through all of this was the spiritual and faith connection that I found. Uh, some came to me through Sunday morning services and certainly through the music. And uh, often though, I found it through volunteering, which was a surprise for me and um, I'm very grateful for. I've been on the nominating committee. That was the very first thing I ever did and I had no idea what I was doing. I served uh, as a board member and as the chair of the board, which was amazing. And uh, if you ever have the opportunity, I thoroughly invite you to do that. I have coordinated coffee hour, which was the hardest job I've ever done an entire year of coordinating coffee hour volunteers. <laughs> I know it sounds silly, but it really was. I've helped with countless fundraisers, auction being my all-time favorite, but certainly pies in the common and so on. And I've ushered for more services and events that I can count. And all of that contributed to my faith and spiritual connections that I found here. But by far, the most fulfilling experience I had was serving as a youth group advisor. And it was a privilege and an honor to help those kids navigate middle school and high school years through to the amazing young adults they are today. And uh, Taryn is one of those. Great job today, Taryn. I share all of this with you as a current member of the Canvas, Canvas Committee because Rebecca is very hard to say no to. <laughs> but I'm happy to share how important this church is to me and to my family. It's not lost on me that the financial commitments of people throughout the history of First Parish fueled my experiences here. Had they not made those commitments, my life and my family's lives would have been very different. Every single laugh, every single tear would have been altered, and I wouldn't want to trade a single one of them. So every canvas, that's what I think of, and that's what I remind myself of. So I do invite you as a member of the Canvas Committee, but more important as a member of this community to join me in making a financial commitment this year that will ensure that this community is here for the next family that comes along who's looking for a place to focus and find their balance. Thank you. And with that, we will receive the morning offering. Dreams of your youth, long forgotten, lost within the sameness of your days, locking up your hopes and sapping out your joys, leaving all the pain behind. keeps on saying follow me and I will 
will set you free. Follow me, and I will set you free. But you're afraid, you've grown so accustomed to the numbing routine of your days. And you fear inside to make a change means taking all your risks alone. And you're not sure at all, still that voice within your heart says and keeps right on saying. set you free marching to the tune you hear within your heart it's a lonely task and that's the hardest part but if you remain and step with what you Walk with head held high and without fear. Dream your dream. Hope your hopes be true to your heart, and you will reach the farthest star. Live your life in the fullest way, and across your soul will sign the dawn of day. It's your day. It's your day The voice within your heart keeps saying Follow me And I will set you free Follow me And I will set you free set you free Let's focus a little bit on music as meditation and a spiritual practice. It's very nice to have music playing while driving, dining, pretty much any time, but really connecting to a piece of music can be anywhere from calming, exciting, a prayer, or very healing. To sing a piece gets you to regulate your breathing, which is of course the first thing you hear from anyone speaking about meditation or relaxation. Those of you who came to my music me as meditation session a few weeks ago learned the 478 breathing exercise. It's a great way to relax and prepares you for holding those long notes in a song. I'd like to go over that for anyone who wasn't able to be there. It's a very simple thing. You breathe in for four seconds, hold the breath for seven seconds, and release it for eight seconds. 
Okay, so, and everybody remains seated. You don't need to get up for this. Um, but give that a try. So breathe in for four. One, two, three, four. Hold on to it for seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Release it slowly for eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, try that one more time. Breathe in for four. One, two, three, four. Hold. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exhale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Very good. That gives your body a chance to absorb some of that oxygen you took in. So many times when you're out of breath, <laughs> you know, and if you just do that real quick, that'll, that'll take care of itself. <clears throat> when singing, you're telling a story. When you focus on the lyrics, you can begin to feel the story and can express that with dynamics by getting louder and softer to add life to the story as you would if you were reading to someone. As you sing today's hymns, try to focus on the lyrics and see what each hymn says to you and how it makes you feel. We're going to sing a bunch of hymns, so please remain seated. And in the teal books, if you could turn to 1040, he's called Hush. This one's hard not to feel. <laughs> That's a fun one. I love that. All right. So in the gray book, in the gray book, turn to uh, 21. Beauty of thee. 
All right. Uh, how about uh, 311? Let it be a dance. So let's end this with 346. Come sing a song with me.
Thank you, Diane Ingalls. That was beautiful. Initially, and according to the program, I had planned on uh, two hymns played with the organ. I'm going to cut those because <laughs> we'll be here until maybe 20 past 11, 11.30 if I do them. <laughs> I don't mind that personally, but yeah. <laughs> so we're going to go right to the bell pieces.
How about now? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Those are fun. Bell choir is like bringing 12 of your friends in to play a piano piece and each person gets two notes. <laughs> it can be a lot of fun. While we make the transition over to the uh, singing choir, I'd like to uh, play a piece on the organ. It's one of Margaret Crow's favorites. Uh, it's a piece called Bacchiana on an Ancient Chorale.
Now, everybody, we would like to thank you all for joining us this morning. And on behalf of Reverend Aaron, I extend gratitude to our volunteers and staff. Thanks to Tom Ostfield, our tech operator, our choir members, our ushers. Now, Dean will read a few words and then sing to Jones. Well, thanks for bearing with us for running a little over time. Um, we now extinguish our chalice with the words of Elizabeth Sell Jones, reading number 456 in our gray, gray hymnal. Extinguishing the chalice. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth. 
the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Thank you. Hope you've enjoyed today's Music Sunday as much as we've enjoyed putting it together. Um, let me know if you have hymns or music you'd like to hear. If you have something you would like to play or sing during a service, it would be also great to have you involved. There are still openings in both choirs, too. Thank you. Okay. Um, until we get together again, may you hold the light always, and may the light and love of this community hold you always. I'd like to end with a piece that my father wrote. And he never did give it an actual title, but I call it Dad's Honky Tonk Piece. Hope you like it. <laughs> And lastly, and in addition, we want to say once again, thank you all so much for coming and joining us on our Music Sunday. And I, for one, would like to reach out and say thank you very, very much to our musical director, Dean Arvidsson. Thank you all again. Have a good Sunday.